with the exhibition as a title is the Coral Reef. It was built in uh, 1999 but opened in January of 2000 in Matt's Gallery in the East End and it's been rebuilt for the first time now, you know, almost exactly 10 years later. Um, the, the Coral Reef kind of referred to an idea of sort of like uh, an ocean surface, like a, referring to the idea of an ideology, sort of like a, a prevalent ideology that's a, an economic one of capitalism, under which sort of a, a coral reef, a sort of a complex and fragile structure of different sort of belief systems existed. So in a sense, sort of like each, each different room was indicative of a different sort of belief system. Sort of. So as you walk through, the first room you come to is the, the faked kind of reception of a, an art gallery. And the second one you come to is an Islamic minicab office which you come to the back of, which then you come back to later on within the work, sort of a, which is a replica of itself. And then on to like a room of Americana, a, a room of heroin, a room of dope, a, a room of a biker or mechanics, kind of like a, worshipping the kind of like automobile, the car, the motorbike, and, uh, and one room that's just a void or empty, sort of like a, kind of the unseen, the unknown, the other, sort of like the room of horror, ultimately. When I was looking for sort of uh, belief structures which perhaps kind of interested me or kind of that I kind of saw that were sort of prevalent around me but somehow kind of occupied a, a position of sort of like a of weakness uh, in, in the face or almost futility in the face of sort of like structure we kind of live within, kind of uh, call it what you will. Especially sort of like at that point because this is back in 99 and then opening in January 2000, this is a year, you know, over a year before sort of like a, a 11th of September and... Uh, July the 7th, sort of subsequent sort of like kind of relationships between the East and Islam sort of a, uh, you know, it was a very, it seemed like a very disempowered sort of like belief structure sort of in a position which somehow couldn't be heard. I think this work's kind of predating of that m moment somehow makes it more interesting and more kind of well, there's a distance there which kind of like helps it ultimately sort of a, because, you know, it's um, when there's real lives and um, you know, involved in such things that art might kind of refer to it becomes far more complicated to actually kind of, you know, to, to make, make sense of something sort of like within a sort of short term time scale. Even though you know that it's ultimately a sort of a, f a complete fiction what you're walking into because you know this is the Tate Gallery you know you might allow yourself to sort of like um, to go with that you know I think I always used to make the analogy of reading a book you know you sit down in your armchair and yet you could be um, sailing the seas fighting in the first world war sort of uh, you know sleeping with a concubine in sort of god knows where sort of like you could do anything ultimately if you agreed to sort of um, to go with that sort of like um, fiction within the first few pages and the idea is that you're invited to become lost in this lost world of lost people. Well, in the early nights I was making far more sort of didactic work, you know, more political work, which could have demanded a far more sort of like linear sort of, or teleological reading of sort of, in a more art sort of way. And at the same time I started developing a sort of more narrative driven kind of work, which to begin with they were like, they were like objects, so props and scripts from non-existent films. So in a sense, this was the sort of the first work that I think that, that really sort of managed to kind of equate sort of, say, a, a literary structure to a spatial structure. You know, I think it only really, for me, it only really works if you think of it within its context, you know, when it was made. It becomes kind of very archival, it becomes kind of, like, historical. You know, it's like a mise-en-scene from a sort of, like, another time. And, you know, and that will become stronger and stronger in time as it kind of rebuilt because, you know, even a a really banal thing like a piece of rough storm three or two now becomes like a sort of a strange relic from another age already and the meanings kind of ultimately will shift it won't have that immediacy and that sort of sense of, of being about that moment it'll be about another moment that's passed <laughs>